What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Koopa J, and we're back, man. You know, we got episode two. You know, I'm trying to stay consistent as I can with these podcasts, you know, so I appreciate everybody coming through. You know, it was a little bit last minute that I gave it to you guys on Uncle Oklahoma FGC page in the Discord. Uh, shout out to those who are in those. But nonetheless, we have an episode today, and I got my man all the way from Tulsa in the building. My man, War Gus, what's going on with you today, Brody? How what's you doing? What's going on? Everything's good, good here. You doing good over there, man? I, yeah, I, yeah. See you, I see you masked up. It looks like you kind of got an event going on or something. You got some You got some people in the back, or what's up? What's up, man? Oh, yeah, we got several people in the back. So uh, we got some of the Webster kids over in from, you know, from Tulsa. So we have... We all mask up. That's the way it is, you know. Okay, okay. I ain't mad at you, man. I ain't mad at you. It's, just, it's getting kind of crazy out here, man. Getting a little hairy. So y'all just y'all boys stay safe over there, you know. But uh, again, man, thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, you know, kind of just wanted to talk to you for a little bit here. Just take a little bit of your time. I know this was last minute, and me and you, man, we've had episodes like <laughs> like we this is like what the third the third time we've uh in terms of like just laced an episode right but obviously you know we're here now we're just like yo third time's a charm so um you know here we are and uh yeah just glad to have you on the show man so i want to talk to you and kind of just get an introduction for you man for people that may not know you or know anything about you out here in the oklahoma fpc you got some subscribers in the chat too man i appreciate that man thank you taylor thank you for the subscription man so just talk to me about um in terms of the uh the fgc and your introduction out here man and how you got introduced well it was a rough introduction at first <laughs> and uh you know we just trying to find the so we started off with hearthstone and that was it's not fgc of course but the um we had to kind of search out and find the fgc now i know that everyone's like oh it's here though it's you know i see it all the time but um at one point we just couldn't find anybody so we got every we started just filling out and seeing what what groups are open and then we found everybody one shot you know yeah. all of a sudden it's just like bam and then uh we got introduced with rashad and he's been a saint helping us out with everything and and just you know we've been doing a lot of things with him yeah okay and uh yeah so i mean like you know obviously i know you kind of came in right it was like, you know, War Guts and everything kind of came in right. The brand, you know, not just you, you know, just talking about the brand as a whole kind of came in right as the pandemic hit. Right. And um, so, like, you know, like um, just kind of talk to me, like, you know, in terms of like before, you know, like we were already, we were already obviously at our peak. We were like on the way up and then everything just kind of got dumped, man. So just in the terms and a little short amount of time that you've been in the FGC here, man, just uh, talk to me about some things that you've kind of just witnessed here and and what you like and what you don't like about the FGC and so on and so forth. Well, the, uh, so we were at chalk when they did that first event or that event at chalk. And, yeah, uh, yeah. we saw the, the, I mean, you guys were doing it, yeah, you we know, and we were like, well, we need to do that at Tulsa. Why aren't we doing that? <laughs> why, why is this not a thing? Um, we went to another event too, which was a little, uh, off, you know, kilt, but, it still did. It was an event. It was something, you know, and so we tried out. We tried to try out all, all the events just to just to see what you know what they had to offer, um, and it was it was great. You know, they they had fantastic events. Everything went well. Um, we left Chalk a little early. Uh, it's a long drive home, <laughs> so we weren't expecting to be there forever. But it was great. Um, then uh, the pandemic hit. And uh, it slowed us down a bit. You know, we didn't have the, we started doing 12 mans, 12 mans. We did a couple 12 mans. Everybody had to, you know, wear masks. Everybody, you know, was getting, we're getting checked at the door for temperatures, all that. So we did, I don't know, six or seven 12 man tournaments, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken. Um, I think that was it for that, at that time frame. Yeah, um, yeah, and we did several different, several different ones. Okay, um, but other than that, that was uh. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a customer here. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. No, you go. Go ahead. Um, yeah, man. So nah, just moving from that, right? And I guess just like everything, you know, up to that point, and you know, just talking about 
COVID and everything like that. I guess my next question that I would probably want to ask, right, just bouncing from that, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing uh, in your role as like a tournament organizer in Tulsa? And uh, how are you guys like tackling it in terms of like, you know, the, the establishment, you know, like the venue that you have and, and things like that? And what, what steps are you taking to, to try to, I guess, keep players safe and, and just move forward at the same time in the scene? Well, the biggest the biggest problem we're having is just players in general. Yeah, and I get it. You know, everyone's we try to make it as safe as we possibly can here, and uh, we we've had issue with players. We've had a uh, you know a lot of good players come through too, um, but it seems like we we give out you know a lot of tournaments and then. A, a lot of no shows, you know. Yeah. It, it has nothing to do with, uh, I guess, the timing. It just mostly, you know, we were doing quite a bit, and we do online too. So it's not like we're we're not just we're doing both online and offline. So it's not like it, it's not one or the other. And part of it is some of them don't want to try online, which is, I mean, it's the life we live right now. And then some of us um, would 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 do you know the four-man tournaments in which that's fine for us we pay out on anything four man one man shows up i pay it out it's just the i mean that's how we work yeah and that was some of our that's been kind of our main problem is just that the player base is just not it's just not showing up you know okay. and it's free tournaments free money i mean Sometimes it's just not working out and yeah. uh, we've been having to go towards other means. And so it's kind of like what I, I had to say it, but we started going for new blood, you know, and these guys are, you know, I, I don't want to be a, a dick, but a newer FGC. They don't want to. They don't want to come out. I'll just, uh, we'll just build another one if that's what it comes down. You know, I I don't want to do that because I, because there's a lot of guys out here that are amazing. They're amazing guys, but you know, we have to do what we got to do on on that part. And it's not like we're like, oh, we're trying to get as much money as we can. It's free to come in. It's free to come in, man. Yeah. You know, practice is is free. I can't, I can't, I don't know what more we can do to give you a spot. <laughs> we made the spot to give it to you. You yeah, got yeah. it. We got PS5s. We got everything you need. The practice is here. If, if that's just, I don't know, I don't know what to do after that, you know? I understand. I, I definitely get it. And it's, it's a tough, it's a tough road, right? Because you, I feel like you have a handful that, that want to travel and then a handful that don't want to travel because of COVID. Right. So um, do you think maybe possibly in the future that you would possibly, I know that you've went the route of throwing like the, the tournaments online. Mm -hmm. Right. And and you've done that. You know, you've had your you've had your share with it and everything. But if players were willing to, I guess, step to the plate and and I guess participate in your tournaments more like, let's say, like a weekly or mm -hmm. or just something like that with a pop bonus and, and you know, kind of got more people on board. Would you be willing to to host that? And, and you know, obviously I would get on the commentary with you and, and try to help in ways I could. You know, obviously I'm yeah. a college student, like trying to just do my thing. But. Um, are you interested in that idea? Because I know a lot of TOs are just kind of like, they don't like the idea of just online. And I get it. I understand it. It's just like, if, if I had to compare it, it's like just being in the stock market, paper trading, right? Like it's not real trading, but it's trading, you know? So I, I definitely get it. So what do you think about that, man? Oh yeah. Without, without a doubt, I would, I would love to do a, you know, online, offline setup. It goes both ways here. You know, we, we don't have to have, we can have five people online, five people offline. Um, and I'm not against just doing straight online either. It's, it's what we had, we had to deal with, you know, we did it with Hearthstone. We did it with Brawlhalla. We did it with, you know, every game and we just got to deal with it. You know, if yeah. you don't want to do it and you want to kill your scene, that's on you, man, but we're doing it. And I put in, you know, fifty, hundred, two hundred dollars myself. Not to mention the built the place, man. Hey, <laughs> you know, it's just cost. It don't cost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I yeah. built it so you guys have something. 
You know, I was tired of watching all these other places just eat your money, take everything you have on practice. You know, I wanna, I want, I want you guys to succeed. I want Tulsa or shoot, not even Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want Oklahoma to be the top. I want, I want to see that. But you can't do that if no one's gonna show. I know they're practicing in other places, and I get that. But when you have to bring your own equipment, equipment fails. You, you don't have that problem here. We have the PS5s. You need, you, we got, we got them. You need PS4s done. Got them. You need PCs. No problem. We got them. You can't make it to a tournament. Something's wrong. And your net's messed up. Contact me, and I got you. I will take care of you. Do whatever you need. You know, set you up in the back corner if necessary. If there's a lot of people here, and make it quiet for you. You know. I'm here to support you and really push our community. And, you know, they always say, oh, you say community. And then, and then you know, they're always night for the – I don't know how much more I can be for a community than free. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I agree, man. I definitely agree. I, I, I mean, I know if I was probably in Tulsa, um, you know, just kind of given the circumstances that I'm in right now, um, you know, me, I'm just, I'm not traveling, man. I'm just, I'm not, you know, and I, you know, everybody has to each their own, you know, but definitely, I mean, if it's there and it's available and you're willing to go out, then I mean, yeah, I would, I would definitely support it, man. I mean, like you got the G fuel fridge in the back, the chips, yeah. man. Like, you know, if the, at the very least, I feel like if you guys are going to go out and support my man, like buy a soda, buy some yeah. chips, it's free. You know, he's already giving you the, he's already giving you the PS fives, right? The, the yeah. PCs, like he said, so just support him, you know, in terms of, of just your establishment, man. And and kind of moving from that, right, talking talking about just um, everything that you're, you know, the challenges and like what you're doing and everything like that. Uh, so obviously, you know, you got the building, you got everything in place, right? And which wasn't easy. You know, I remember I remember like when you were first coming up, you were coming. Essentially, I've watched you grown through the pandemic, right? Like, yeah. it's like yeah. you, were about, you were getting your wings and then the pandemic happened. And even still, I feel like, you know, I really commend you. And I don't think the scene gives you a lot of credit for it. You know, you still found a way to get those setups, to, to, to keep things alive. You know, a lot of places would have just came out like I seen it in the mall, for example, right? There was a there was an esports organization here in Norman that was in the mall. I don't know who they were, you know, but I would just kind of go by and see. And they were trying to like throw tournaments and like this venue stayed around. It was in the mall. It stayed around for about a year, but like the pandemic just kind of they just got blown out of the water, man. And I, I imagine it cost a lot of money to rent that space in the mall, you know. Granted, you know, like he stayed there for almost a year and a half, so it wasn't like he was living rent free. But it's just, you know, like it kind of just shut him down. But you were able to to prosper through that. And um, so 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 just going off of that, man, what is motivating me? What's motivating you right in terms of just the esports, in terms of just the FGC? And and how do you keep that motivation out here? Hmm. So what motivates me is uh, I'm tired of watching Texas win everything. <laughs> I'm tired of them being the main spot. I'm tired of them having all the big esports companies. I'm tired of them. You know what I want? We have an international airport, guys. <laughs> we should be the spot. We are the middle of the United States. We should be the spot. Why aren't we the spot? Well, it seems like everyone's fighting each other all day long. You know? Stop stop doing that and build something. You guys had something amazing at one point. I saw it. I saw it. And then all of a sudden something happened. It wasn't the pandemic. It was way before then. Because I did my research looking through everything. It looked like, it kind of looked like Egypt. You know, you can, you're like, oh, there, there was a temple here. But now, what, what happened to it? What, why is there all this dirt on it? What, you guys were doing so well. I would have supported that. I wouldn't have built my spot if I saw that. I would have just, I would just put my money into the community. But I didn't, it wasn't there. I didn't see it. I couldn't find it. I kept having to dust stuff off. I'm like, oh, okay, it was here. I don't know where else to go. So my, I'm really wanting to get Oklahoma into where we're running esports like crazy. You know, this is our. I mean, I'm talking to the mayor, talking to school districts, uh, and they just did this big thing on when on uh, Wednesday. Where the school districts are, all, all the Oklahoma school districts are doing a sign in from, uh, or they get a contract with this esports company from California. You kidding me? You know what that means? They didn't see nothing here. Yeah. 
if they saw nothing here, you're not doing your job. If you can't find, if I'm getting new players in here that are 30 plus years old and you haven't, and they're like, I've never even knew there's an FGC here. And they've been here for 10, 15 years. You're not doing your job. Something's wrong. Okay. We got to fix that. That's something that has to be fixed. And I, I understand. I'm not being a, I'm not trying to be a, uh, a, a dick to anybody, but I mean, you know, just call it how you see it. Like when you, how, how you, you just, you're just being in the, yeah, just a yeah. new perspective, man. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just that. coming in like that. And I understand, you know, oh, well, they didn't done Facebook or they haven't, I hear the same thing over and over again. But the problem with that is, is that so you're, you're making them do the job? Aren't you supposed to be putting that, put it out there? You know, that's not, that's not for the player to find that. It's for you to find, you to push it. So the player can see it. Yeah. And you spend twenty dollars on ads, do it. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's the best way to do it. You, we have to put more work into advertisement, even if it costs. You know, you 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 go out to eat, spend eighty dollars. You know, on some junk food, <laughs> and you don't want to spend thirty bucks on an ad. You know, we got to work on that. You still there? <laughs> So, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's just like we just like I went on. I don't know. I, like, I, don't know I just heard some stuff in my ear. I'm sorry, man. But no, uh, picking. Uh, go ahead and continue off that, man. I, just the uh, the last part. I know you were talking about the advertisement. Yeah, um, we just have for, to do some basic ads. You know, some basic stuff on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that. It's all there. You have the options. I mean, they had mentioned how, you know, how war gets their ads are always out there. They're always saying, you know what? Yeah, you guys see them. Go to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not. And plus, you know, all these snacks back here, I'm not gouging you. It's a dollar. <laughs> you know, the soda's yeah. a dollar. The G Fuel's three dollars. Listen, man, I go to my vending machine at school. They'd be like two fifty for a bag yeah, of Skittles. Exactly. I'm like, inflation is real right now, man. Exactly. Banging me over the head for some Skittles, man. Yeah. But uh, no. Nah, um, I want to uh, ask you, like, I, I want to touch on that a little bit more, right? So, like, you're talking about like the advertisements and things like that. Now, I assume since you've been advertising, like, you know, talking about it, you've been, you've had like paid advertisement. You've paid mm -hmm. for your organization to to reach out and and things like that, right? Now, have you had any success in terms of like? Obviously, we know Oklahoma City, Tulsa. Um, you know, I, I see a little bit of Shawnee. I see like everywhere. Oh, oh, like on that Oklahoma page, I see a lot of uh, a little bit of everywhere in Oklahoma, right? There's there's not really uh just like a set place. But um, have you have you found any new players in terms of like people that have seen your advertisements and have came to you and reached out and go, man, I don't even I didn't even know we had something here. Like just I guess like a, a story in terms of just the 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 sponsorships and the advertising working in real time. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I did this ad, and it was it was meant for another day. It was like a Saturday pop up ad. It was paid, okay. So it was like six bucks, you know, six dollars, and it was it was meant for new players. And so I sent it out. Three days later, that ad, because I left it for three days. I just yeah. did the pop up within like a two day time frame so but the I, I it was six bucks so i was like i'll just let it run okay this guy comes and goes oh my gosh i didn't even know there was an fgc in in oklahoma i come from philadelphia i had no idea i have me and like five other people that i know that play and they came in they had no idea and that ad oh if it didn't exist it would never he never was saw it yeah it's like where do you find it at he's like instagram i'm like Instagram. I don't remember putting. Oh yeah, Facebook puts it into Instagram automatically. Yeah, and I didn't even know that. One. Yeah, it's a two for one. I'm like, what? You can't meet. Most people use Instagram to the run. The the ads are just coming through, you know. And those are those are little things you start to learn as you as you're making the ads. I mean, my ads are not the world's best. I can tell you right now, Photoshop junk and and just. But you know what? It's out there. It's people the effort. The information. And uh, it, uh, what I what. It, you know, Ricky was right. Nobody reads <laughs> and nobody reads them as, but I made it knowing that I make it to where it's, it's, it's quick. It's easy. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not, you have to sit there and read a book, you know, just make a quick ad. Looks good. Done. See you later. 
I'm not spending five hours trying to make the perfect ad. That's not, don't, just don't. They're just going to throw it away. It's going into the, you know, Facebook back out. <laughs> yeah, it's never going to be seen again or to be seen again. You know, some, you know the, in order for me to learn uh, how to or where everybody was, I went to back ads, stuff that people had put out. It's the only reason why I found some things. You know, it's like, oh, okay, these things actually exist at one point. And now that's how I got to this point. Um, learning how to make the ads that didn't like some of the ads they make are so like glamorous and crazy that I don't even, I didn't even read half the crap that's on it. You might as <laughs> well put a white screen with, with what's going on. And then guess what? Everyone sees it and they're like, yeah. oh, here it is. Don't get crazy with it. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, but I think that's important, man. I mean, like, no matter the ads, look how they look. I see you out here, bro. Right? Like, I see it. I see the work you put in, even on my Discord, the announcement page. Um, I think a lot of times stuff just gets overlooked. I think a lot of times people don't really give you your shine out here. And I, I definitely am one to say that I, I've seen the grind. I've seen the come up. I mean, I've seen what you've done for the players out here in terms of, you know, whether paying them out, whether just having somewhere where they can go. You know, I can talk especially like with the chalk, right? Like, well, not not the chalk, the uh, 51st Speak Easy, excuse me. Shout out to my man, Kellen World Peace. But uh, yeah, man, like, you know, like on the fly, you know, like that that day I had that that talk with Ricky, you know, the next, the, the, that very next day you were in my phone, like, hey, I'll be there, you know, pulled up, had like four or five setups for the chalk. Well, Speak Easy, I don't know why I keep getting that confused. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I appreciate that. I'm just like, yeah, you didn't have to do that. You know, like you took time out of your Saturday to come support something that we were doing out here at the time, you know, like was trying to keep alive. And uh, I just I really appreciate that, man. It's like the little things. And I, I guess I'm just telling you that now. I really appreciate that. It's the small things that that, that go a long way with me. So I definitely see you in terms of in, in terms of that. So um, so I guess, we, you know, just having all that, like we just talked about motivation, right? Like trying to trying to beat Texas. I mean, that's that's just a thing. You know, I, I definitely think there's like that Texas OU rivalry. You know, it's got it yeah. kind of correlates into the, the FGC in a way. Right. Like I get it. I understand it. But um you know, for sure. Uh, so moving from that, right? Um, you know, like all this, you know, on the way you've had this journey, right? Where you've started in the FGC and you've seen, you've seen the highs, you've seen the lows, you know, you've seen like the community, you know, kind of go back and forth on threads about, you know, certain topics, situations, and and you know, like I, I obviously imagine you've you've kind of been under the radar yourself in terms of just like some scrutiny and things like that, but if you had to take it all, man, like what are some of the most important lessons you've learned over your little, your FGC career in the Oklahoma FGC in terms of the tournament organizer, you know? Well, part of it is, uh, you know, mm, I always thought things had to be perfect and get, I, I'd always try to make everything as, as, as perfect as I could. The reality is it won't go perfect. So you're going to have to fix it and things are going to go wrong or tournaments are going to run 15, 20 minutes late because something happened, you know, uh, an update happened on <laughs> a stream or, or a player just didn't make it on time yet, you know, and then you just kind of, you're, when you're doing 12 person tournaments, it's like, kind of need those two guys to show up because <laughs> all I got is 10. Um, and really the, the learning part is, it's the there's a lot of good people and a lot of good players. There's a there's a lot of good leaders that do a really good job about pushing forward, but at the same time, there's a lot of leaders out there that that actually hinder uh, a lot of people from actually doing what they think. I would say that there's followers and leaders, and some of those followers will only do what the leaders do, which makes no sense to me. They just don't think for themselves. They just kind of go with the, with the flow of with the leaders. Find out stuff by yourself, you know. Um, it just, it, it, to me, that's what I see, and I've been seeing that quite a bit, you know. Like some of these leaders are like, oh, you know, don't go to this thing or don't go to that thing. You know what? As a me, I'm, first thing I do is I go to those things <laughs> because I can't, I can't stand watching somebody say, Hey, don't do this or don't do that. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go do that now. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know? And you know what? I found some of the most amazing people just doing that, you know, 
just going to these other events that may be smaller or, you know, or shooting with the Blackwell. And I've met amazing people out there. And, you know, Chuck Steak was out there. We did a little event out there. And it wasn't the best event. The way they set it up was not very good. And it wasn't, you know, but you know what? I got to meet some people. I met, you know, and our next event over there in Blackwell, they gave us a full venue for free. Dang. So we're going to make something happen. You know, and that's 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 the way we and I would never met them if we didn't just take that that little journey and that little sometimes you're you're going to go to the place and like, oh, it, it was a horrible tournament. But did you get to meet two guys? Did you get to find the the next, you know. Daigo, you never know. <laughs> it could just pop out of nowhere. And you just that, that's that's part of the learning process is just is just seeing that. The mistakes are being made by not going to just smaller tournaments and just, you know, I just see the the leadership needs to make sure they're staying pretty straight, you know? Okay. So you would, so you would kind of just chalk that up into terms of like leadership, um, hmm. you know, just to kind of, I guess, go back over the question, you know, the things you've just learned, like in, in terms of kind of talk about what you were describing, you know, earlier when you were talking about just like the leaders and the, the followers and so on and so forth, like, obviously, you know, like, um, you were talking about, um, people, people wanting to go to things and pe telling people not wanting to go to things, so on and so forth. But like, kind of give me an example out that, uh, of that here in the, in the FGC, like kind of mm -hmm. talk about that, what you, what you've just seen here in Oklahoma in terms of that. Well, so usually it's like, so, like our TOs are, they're all good. No, no problem with any of them. They, they all do a good job, but then you have certain, there's, there's the TOs and then there's some other leadership that comes into play, you know, and then there's the hidden leaders that, that make, uh, you know, like for instance, Mortal Kombat has their own leadership. Tekken has their own leadership. You know, Street Fighter has their own leadership. It's all different, you know, and each one has in there and can have a, mm, a toxic leader in in inside of that and it it can cause like four people not to show up just because they have that that mentality is like nah we don't know who that is nah we ain't doing it that's a problem man that's not cool you gotta give everybody a a little bit of a chance i get oh you burn me oh they burn me you know what yeah but you could have grabbed three players that, that went you know, and you're like, oh, hey, this is the one that Oklahoma FGC looks like. It's not what it really looks like, you know. Here, let me bring you into where it's supposed to look like, you know. Or even helping some of the TO, just like they were talking about, TOs will be all, oh, uh, you should do it this way. Well, that guy doesn't want to hear you, you know. He just failed, and it sucks. And he don't want to hear you. He don't want to hear you. And that's, that's, you know, these are things that you people push upon people and don't realize that give them a, give them a second, let them think it through. And then, then we can go process on and, and figure out what can be fixed. You know, okay. you go know, the same thing for me. I mean, I think that most of our tournaments went well because I ha had Rashad next to me. He was like, Hey, don't do that. Oh, here, do this. Yeah. And he's been a fantastic guy to help me out with everything. Um, and I wouldn't trade him for anybody at this moment for, for TOs, you know, um, shoot, I wish I could put him on staff to be honest. If I had the chance, I would, you know, and that's, these are all just little things that we don't think about as a community. And, you know, I'm pushing myself into the community as that, but I just, I hate to see that, you know, I hate to see people just, just throw people around like that, you know? Okay. So talking about just like your, you know, the community and, and everything like that. And, you know, you're obviously your aff affiliation with like the players out there in Tulsa, right? Because I, I feel like a lot of times, like there really isn't just anything out there in Tulsa besides war guts. I mean, like there's Dragon Slayer out here, but like Dragon Slayer, I think is kind of, I don't know the whole situation of Tulsa and I'm not going to sit here and speak, like <laughs> I do know, you know, like, but I know before like Dragon Slayer was a place before War Guts, like, you know, people were going to get yeah. games. That was like huh? the spot. So, you know, just from your start of your organization, right. And, and, and having your establishment and having your building, um, what is one thing that your organization did for players that you didn't expect? 
you know, like whether it was like other players, like, you know, meeting people, having new friends or, you know, just having somebody just like, well, damn, I didn't know this was here now. Like, you know, like maybe a parent bringing their kids because they just want their kids involved, like anything of that nature, man. Well, um, I get that a lot. Like the kids, like parents will bring kids and then like, oh man, this is amazing. Uh, I didn't even know this was here, which is pretty normal since we never did a grand opening. <laughs> you know, we never got that opportunity to do a grand opening. I mean, we have one set aside for a fantastic grand opening with a chunk of tournaments and I held it. I, I'm holding it. So one day that when we can't do a grand opening, we're going to do it and we're going to do it big. But um, my biggest surprise is the different groups that are around, you know, um, like, just like I said, the Tekken Street Fighter, they're all grouped differently. Like I would have a 12, 15 man tournament and they're not all the same people. It's all completely different people. And uh, that surprised me because I was thinking it was going to have a lot of run, like the same type of people every time, like same group coming through. And that very, that was, that was a surprise. And then we got other places that I cannot mention. Apparently I was told um, that, uh, that so have, we, talk, like, so we classify, we classify FGC, right now. FGC uh, groups that aren't part of Tulsa, Oklahoma city. There's a bunch of groups out here with 30, 40, 50 players that we didn't even know existed. Okay. And uh, we're running into them on a constant base now. And so I'm kind of getting, I'm starting to learn that there's a there's a group there's always a, a like a ten man group somewhere that doesn't even know has no idea about anybody right? or they're just doing their thing and having fun and you run into them and like I go to a bar or I I wind up somewhere and you find them and it's crazy that's the crazy part that that I was not expecting I was expecting everybody to be kind of more together but it's not like it's nowhere near that. Um, now with, I'm going to put it like this dragon slayer. I like, I like dragon slayer. Cool guys, cool owner. Everybody's pretty cool. You know, had some, uh, my first experience there wasn't fun, but they had TOs there that were not doing their job, you know, and that's, that's not, that doesn't reflect on dragon slayer. Well, it does at the time, but then when you learn and you actually walk in and realize it's not not who they are and so my my experience when i first went in there wasn't fun um but since then it's been fine it's been fine ever since okay. so yeah man like i said i and there's not really like i said i've never been to that venue I, I i feel like i really can't even just speak on it i know they've been there i know at one point in time you know players were going there for games so i, I will commend them for that for sure you know like shout out to dragger slayer in uh tulsa but um, obviously, you guys would know a little bit better down there. And if anybody's in the comments, you know, from Tulsa right here, like, you know, you can definitely speak on it in the in the comments. And a lot of you guys' comments that you're dropping, like, I'd like to hear some feedback from you guys. And I'll kind of go over these questions at the end of this segment uh, in terms of that. But I appreciate everybody coming by. You know, this is my man, War Guts. We're just having a, a nice conversation here, man, just talking about the, uh, the Oklahoma FGC, just the life of a TO, just my man, kind of giving him the kind of giving you guys the backdrop of just his um, his run here in the Oklahoma FGC. So moving from that, right? So, you know, you're talking about, obviously we just, I just gave you that question. You're talking about, you're just finding like new groups, essentially, right? That like are in different areas of, of, of Oklahoma that you didn't discover, didn't maybe know, maybe we don't know. Maybe there's just like uncharted territory in Oklahoma that we think we know about, but we just technically don't. And I think that's, I think that's a, definitely a thing because like, like I said, I've, I've seen on that Oklahoma page, like a few TOs, like some, some guys just trying to start little projects in Shawnee, you know, like, um, and Shawnee's not that big, you know, it's not, it's not a big place at all, but just the fact that there's like guys there playing games, it's like, it goes to show you like, well, man, something's there, like something, you know, that's the, 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 the rock has to be unturned essentially. Right. So, um, moving from that, right. What do you think helps make like esports environments out here like a better place? Do you think it's it's in terms of like the TOs trying to just keep the keeping players like organized? Do you think it's the players being involved in the communities, whether it's the discords, um, just trying to get games, trying to level up, get better? Uh, just what's your spin on it? I think the hmm, the hard part is to see people level up and get better because I don't. I, I see it from time to time, 
You know, there's some people that are really willing to teach. And that's something that we're miss that we were missing when I first started. I didn't see that many people that were willing to teach. They were kind of for themselves. But lately it's been different. People are willing to teach and I've been seeing a, a just a a different mindset, you know. Uh at one point it was cutthroat and you you got to realize that being cutthroat all the time leaves you with bodies on the floor and nobody there to play, <laughs> you know. You're not going anywhere. And uh I think that's that's part of the I think that's that's our main thing is this we just need to start teaching, you know. Yeah, oh, you learn it from the internet. Man, sometimes you just don't. Some people learn differently, <laughs> you know. And that's that's part of the I don't know. I I think that's some of our issues is is that, you know, is just having the camaraderie. So, I know, we talked about this in my last podcast. It's just com yeah. camaraderie. camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't even say it. <laughs> camaraderie. I don't know. I probably butchered it again. But yeah, I get I get your point. You know, like just having a, a place where, you know, a lot of people I, I, I tell all the time, like a lot of a lot of other scenes just aren't even fortunate to have a scene, you know. So like whether we're big or small, whether mm -hmm. we're this, that or the third. Right. I think we just should be grateful that we just have that out here and have a place and places where people can go and represent and and ultimately link up and try to get tech yeah COVID has put that kind of on the back burner but before you know like i think i think i think before a lot of people took that for granted before COVID, right i mean like you had you had the offlines and you had people that were like throwing the sessions at their house like i was included you know i was i was opening my doors to people but you know um now that you know that we've kind of lost that right now you're seeing people like trying to and it's not everybody you know you see people step up to the plate try to get people involved you know shout out to my man taylor sage you know he was just on the on the show last week you know like that guy's always like in the discord hey does anybody want games hey i'm trying to get good at xyz matchup can anybody provide that for me just that effort you know uh saint moon i'll give it to him too you know he's always giving like twitter updates uh hey these guys are playing on stream so on and so forth so just those guys in those communities that kind of just try to keep that together uh I, I definitely think that's key i think we just need to stay in terms of that like on target and, and and keep pushing that man just keep definitely pushing that like we don't know when the end of this COVID stuff is going to be it really sucks you know it just it sucks but at the same time we just can't you can't just put it it's just like you know like almost like going to your job right you can't just stop working right you got to provide you can't just say well COVID's here i can't work anymore like it just doesn't work like that and i feel like that's kind of the i feel like that's kind of the mentality that the fgc has took but at the same time, there's a, it's like the enigma. It's the unknown. Nobody really knows where it's going, what direction. Like, it's just kind of all in the air right now. So definitely a bunch of factors, right? So moving from that, what would you like to see for the future of the FGC here in Oklahoma, or just like in general of the FGC? Uh, just more com, just hmm, more community. You know what? Taylor Sage had a lot of good points, and I liked. I like he kind of flows in my same direction when it comes to, you know, teaching people, talking to people. Really, that's another thing is like you know talking to people. You know, yeah, I get it. You got your group. You guys have your clicks. You guys have your. But when you see a guy in the corner with a controller, you know, here he took like five steps to come out. You know, he came out. He he took that step. Next is the community to, to invite him in. And that's not what we see. That's not what has been happening. You know, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know how many times I, I seen it. Part of it is I kind of test people like that. Like, I'll come in with a controller. Don't talk to anybody. Don't see. I want to see who that who that person is going to be that comes to talk to me. Because I'm an open guy, man. <laughs> you can't. I'll go walk on and talk to anybody. But I want to see what happened. Who's Who's that guy? And sometimes they just leave you there. And they do nothing. I don't talk to nobody. And, you know, it's like I'm sitting here. I'm like, see, uh, it doesn't bother me. But I know there's someone out there that ha they took those ginormous steps to get into the door. And then you guys just left them hanging, you know. And I my, on, at my place, no, you don't get left hanging. <laughs> you don't get that. I see you in the corner. I'm like, what game are you playing? Well, let's play. I suck at it. I don't care, you know. That's that's another thing, you know, games that you may not play, play some, 
play a game that you don't... I only play Tekken. I only play Mortal Kombat. Dude, that guy just stepped out to see what you're like. Maybe he joins in Mortal Kombat. Maybe he joins in Tekken. But you play one of his games, and then you... That guy don't forget that. He doesn't forget it. And these are the little things we need to fix and really help out. And that's what I like to see. You know, Taylor Sage, fantastic. Oh, he supports the stream all the time. He pops in. He says, what's up? He does, you know, and I don't get that from too many people, you know? I get it. So yeah. you're saying, like, in terms of, um, like, things you would, you would see, like, more or in general. Mm -hmm. And I guess you're just speaking in more of like the Oklahoma after you see like maybe just other players popping in other people's stream, you know, just saying hi, yeah. um, just more camaraderie all across the board. Am I kind of in that direction? Is that, is that what you're kind of leaning towards? Yeah. yeah. Just mostly for Oklahoma. Now the, the worldwide FGC, <laughs> I, I don't know, man, <laughs> they start, I mean, they're doing a pretty decent job getting on TV, getting, doing, doing, uh, all kinds of the new games coming out that we leaked that were leaked. You know, if those are true and they're all PS5, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, it, it's those companies don't do what they do and we have to just kind of go with it, you know. Um, and that's just the new generation. And hopefully it's PS4 because, man, it's pricey. <laughs> we don't yeah. do it. But I think that they've been doing pretty good about changing the way the tournaments go, you know. Uh, Evo was probably the biggest letdown we've seen in a minute, but that's, you know, it's new to them, you know? Yeah. What do you expect? It's not the same guys. It's not the same mentality or the, you know, it's going to be a minute. But you know what? Why don't we make the new new Evo? Why are we sitting here doing... We have the ability. We have the people. We have the gear. We have the equipment. Why are we not doing that? Yeah. You know, if that If we don't like it, we change it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a, that's a, that's a key point, right? Because that's, an, that's just something I would like to see in terms of just the, the esports world. Right. I feel like there are, let me think how I want to word this. I feel like there are a lot of commentators, creators, tournament organizers that have really stepped up throughout this pandemic, right? Whether it's throwing like an online event, Granted, I get it. Online event. There's not much we can do. But the fact that these guys are trying to go, you know, above and beyond to keep the games that they like potentially alive, right? Through the online community, through Discord, through commentating, so on and so forth, you know, like whatever the case may be. I would like to see like the esports community kind of take those people and kind of give them a shot, give them an opportunity, you know, I like see some new faces, you know, like commentary wise right i like to talk a lot about commentary you know you see your your, your typical guys you know your, your tasty seeds your say jams you know uh uh majin obama you know like so on and so forth they, these names i could just you could go on and on about the, the normal faces that you typically see but it'd be nice to just kind of see some new blood right um maybe in terms of players right we're always looking for new blood in terms of players in the fgc who's going to be that new next guy that just kind of comes out and is like whoa you know like Hey, I, this guy, I don't know if he was here before the pandemic, but maybe during the pandemic, he just kind of leveled up and kind of came out of left field. And like, here he is now, but all across the board, man, like tournament organizers, you know, I think those I, I'd, I'd like, to, I'd like to just see new blood coming into the scene and that kind of getting acknowledged, you know, because again, I feel like a lot of it is just like, Hey, well, pandemic's here. It's all over. You know, like a, a lot of a lot of people have that mentality. Right. But like uh, guys like you, I, like I always give you praise, like you could have easily just said after this, like, hey, I'm about to cut my losses. You know, here it is like this pandemic is about to start. I don't think I know you're not in it for the money, obviously. Right. Because we're talking about community and what you want to see. And, mm -hmm. you know, you've been around, you know, like you didn't have to keep doing this. You didn't have to provide it. But, hey, here you are, like trying to put this on, trying to still build knocking walls down at your venue, you know, adding setups, buying PS5s, giving people an opportunity. So I think a lot of that needs to come to the forefront. I think you've earned your shot. You know what I mean? And I, I think just kind of just speaking on that, like that's just, I guess how I feel about it. Do you, do you agree on that? Or, or do you, do you, do you feel that way? Or 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did sacrifice quite a bit in, in my time. You know, it's money. You know, to me, money just kind of you earn it, and then what you do with it, and how you do, you know, is is really up to like a lot of people will save it, put in their pockets. I, I want to build a community to help you know people that may not have the internet or kids that may not in this area that that we're in. These kids don't even have internet. Some of them. You know, yeah. and they come in and they, they've never touched a computer in their life, you know, and they're like, oh, you go to school. Yeah, but school only gives us so much, you know, and we only get so far. And, you know, I have 3D printers and all kinds of stuff here that we're building on to help, you know, the community. Just push the movement, you know, just yeah. push, push the organization, push esports, you know, yeah. like, I feel like it's just such a. There's 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 such a, a a stereotype that comes with it, right? I feel like when people hear esports, they kind of just think kids living in their basement, eating Doritos, drinking Mountain Dew, playing video games, and it's like you know that was like the era. I feel like I was kind of growing up there, like the Halo Two era. You know that was just that, like oh man, dude's just grinding out Halo all night, like whatever, you know, like. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you know, you know, yeah. like it's definitely changed now. They're giving out scholarships for this stuff. You know, like they're, they're putting it into schools. It's just getting to that point. So, like, I don't know. I think it's just crazy how a lot of these people are looking for, like, well, who's that expert? You know, but they don't ever like how Ricky and them talked about. They don't ever want to talk to anybody that's just been in the field. You know, mm -hmm. doing this, doing this for a while. You know, like whether it be just on, you know, the community side. Like, they don't have to be known. You know, like I tell people all the time, like I, I don't have to be known. I don't. I just, I just like that I get love in my backyard. I'm cool with that. I'm just a okay with that. I'm great. I'm never looking for it. If it comes, so be it. And if it did, I would give it right back. That's just mm -hmm. me. But you know, um, I'm I mean, not, just, see, I'm not looking to be famous either. I'm just looking to build the community that I know exists here. Yeah, I, it's not that I'm building it up. It's it's that I'm giving the opportunity as much as I can to help. What, give some give, give, give people that just a chance they never had. This was yeah. never around. I tell oh, my yeah. kids all the time they're into this. Hey man, like I wish I had something like this when we were growing up. This was not around. The closest thing that we had was like MLG at the time. And like you would watch like G4 Arena. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like when they would just face off, these teams would face off, and you'd be watching, like, man, I would smoke this dude. Like, SOCOM yeah, 2, exactly, the exactly. original Call of Duty, like, Unreal Tournament 2000. Like, come on, man. Like, I'll really bring it back. Like, that's how far it came, you know? And we didn't have that. There was just no, uh, there was no, like, hey, I could go to school and potentially get a scholarship. Like, that blows my mind in 2021. And, man, I, 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 I tell I tell kids all the time, I, I just wish I had that opportunity. I do. Yeah. I, I, I really do. Like, if I could turn the hands of time, that was something I wish. Like, <laughs> going it, forward, yeah, like, you know? that whole f two years that we, uh, you know, things happen and then we go from there. No, I I personally think um, people don't, they give esports, they look at esports and like, oh, it's just playing video games. But well, the reality is, is you're doing production, you're doing, you're doing everything. You're making all kinds of different ways of doing things. You know, you're, you have to build it yourself. You, you're, you're going with the production part. You're doing the, the wiring. You're doing the, you know, development of a, of a tournament that may not exist that you have to make work. Um, you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff that you would never, I, there's so many endless things that I could, that it, are always going on. You know, I've seen some wiring where I'm like, oh, my gosh, who wired this? This is ridiculous. I can't yeah. even none of this works. <laughs> no one's, yeah. you know, and that's that's part of the esports, you know, brand that is they're trying to push for college. But I think they still have a long way to go before that becomes a real benefit. You know, um, the colleges are really pushing forward. And I think that that's good here in Oklahoma. We finally get to the point where they're in high school, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think a lot of it too is, I don't know, man. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to like, I, I feel like a lot of these big organizations are just looking for like, who has that piece of paper to say they're esports certified. And I think that's the wrong approach, right? I really think that's the wrong approach. I think what you should be asking is who has just had skin in the game to do this. You know what I mean? Like, Obviously, like it's so new, I feel like it's not even to that point yet, right? Like, you, I mean, you, you, you're essentially trying to do something that is not even at that point. So you gotta, you're, you're kind of gonna have to reach out to these communities, 
uh, and find these people that have been doing it. You know, like not everybody's going to just have that piece of paper and be like, I'm here. You know, there's guys like Ricky. There's guys like, um, you know, just so on and so forth. I, I, we could talk about, right? Whether it's commentary, whether it's production wise, whether it is so on and so running the stream, you know, like, so you got to kind of have to bring those guys in to teach people yeah. if you if you want them a part of these programs, you know, and I, I think that's the approach that a lot of these schools are kind of missing. They're just kind of looking for like, well, who's got the who's got the paper, piece of paper, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it does, it makes total sense. I mean, it, it, it's like going to ESPN and it's like, hey, you've never talked on screen before. Uh, you're perfect. Go for it. Good luck. <laughs> you know, it ain't going to work. It's never going to work. You know, I got this piece of paper that tells me that I, I do, you know, psychology and, but you've never actually been in the field and you've never actually been one-on-one -on -one with someone. What? How are you supposed to know what you're doing? You don't, yeah. you have no idea. You have to have the experience and the experience is part of it is, is I had to make my own experience. You know, no, there was no, there's no like road. There's not a road to get there. Yeah, I mean, and, and like, <laughs> and, and prime example, right? You'll like, you'll watch a lot of these hosts that like do these like ESL programs. Like, you know, I watch Counter Strike. Some of these guys that do ESL. Some of these, some of these broadcasters and like people that get on an MC, they really have like a knack for the game because they really love the game, right? You'll have those casters that just really know the game, and then you'll kind of have. The perfect example I can think about, right? It was like whenever they did the, it was like the Tekken event that they did a few years ago when they took like the best North American players and they had them on TV. And uh, I forget who ran that event, but it was on TV, right? They had like Cuddlecore, they had like Jimmy J, and, you know, Anakin, so on and so forth. And and they threw this, you know, big production event and they had this this female MC host. Didn't really know much about Tekken, just, just kind of just like, it just had it just felt like a mass communications broadcast degree but really didn't know much about the field you know so like it was kind of uncomfortable in a way you know like she was asking questions and like she did the best she could but like just imagine if they would have just had somebody in there that like really knew you know that knew these players the player knew, knew uh, this game yeah. you know what i mean kind of just could ask questions that you know like and obviously she's asking these questions to these players and they're just kind of like uh you know like <laughs> they're uh, puzzled they're like what's like, she's okay like you know like <laughs> play, you know like and, you know but i don't know it, it's I, that's a whole another discussion man so moving forward right because i feel like we've just kind of like you know jump on that and you know just the future of esports and yeah. you know obviously it's moving to the colleges and things like that uh is there anything that like there's any questions that i if i if i didn't ask you uh right if i asked you and you wanted me to ask you uh how would you answer it you know what i mean like if there's if there's anything like that at all mm. question like uh Anything. It could be is, anything, man. What's is what, something that you wish I would have asked you and how <laughs> would you have answered it? Yeah, if it's Smash part of the FGC. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So, hey. so I guess, I'll, I'll guess we'll, we'll go ahead and go into that, man. What hey, do you think about it? What I, I personally think, yeah, man, I had to say it, but I got some guys that come through here. We do it on every other Sunday, Smashing Dreams. They can commentate. Every single one of those guys can commentate. I have no idea why you guys don't run like the other places don't have commentating for their streams. Every time I watch every single one, every single one of those guys can commentate. It is insane to watch. They're hilarious. They got their cues. They know what they're doing. It's crazy. I was like, wow. Hey, can I'm going to snatch some of you guys up for other games. You up for that? <laughs> you know? And the thing is, it's like, dang, it's 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 so crazy to see that and they know their stuff and it, it's just it's so it, it is the FGC. I mean that's what it comes down to. They're they're yes, they're a separate come on they're a separate community in itself, but you know, and part another thing is is that the reason why they grew so well is because the it seems like to me the FGC kind of pushed them pushed everyone towards that. You know, here in Oklahoma anyway. It's like, oh, What's the biggest game here? Smash. Well, you just told them to go to, go play Smash now. Go play Smash, you know? And really, they became bigger, and they got bigger and bigger as they go. You know, it's not cheap to play Smash. Smash is expensive. You know, $70, 
plus a four hundred dollar console that you use for nothing else. <laughs> you know, maybe some some ne- <laughs> Netflix. No, Nintendo, or... I'm just saying, Nintendo gets away with murder every year. Yeah, they do. You can get away with you murder. Can have anybody sacrifice on them <laughs> for poor guys? No, but like I, for instance, I play Brawlhalla. I like Brawlhalla. That's my that's my game. Um, I've played it since it came out. You know, in beta. And uh, they support the crap out of the, their players. They for do. Brawl. Oh, yeah, $80,000 every three months. They have $80,000 tournaments. They have tournaments throughout the year. They're paying it out, and it costs them nothing to get into, you know? And you have the difference with Smash, where Smash kind of, you know, they're the redhead stepchild for... The FGC for some reason, and the redhead stepchild for Nintendo man. The the Harry Potter underneath the the stairs, <laughs> open to make it. And guess what? They're making it. That's why I say Harry Potter because they're making it. They're Dude, going. I, I will say like with Brawlhalla, like I know a lot of people don't know about that game, right? Obviously, like they just think like it's a Smash clone. But let me tell you something. Last before the pandemic hit, and I was at final round. I seen those guys, right? Like I I think they were like actually. A part of just the 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 brawlhalla camp i don't know what it was but i went to final round that year you know in atlanta and when i got there every other every other game was behind schedule right street fighter um tekken like my pool like was i think i forget what time my pool was but my the setup wasn't there was no setups there i couldn't warm up literally like they put this they put the setups up and we're like okay Time to start the tournament. Like nobody's getting a warm up that's in these early brackets. Like you just had to sit down and wing it. And I, like that was frustrating, right? I was like, wow. Like I felt like at least the day before they would have had shit set up, you know, but that just wasn't the case. But I will say with the Brawlhalla, those guys were like, I mean, in terms of like the stage production, right? They had like the, they kind of had like the main lobby, right? They had the chairs out there already laid out. They had the computer setups with keyboards. They provided keyboards for people that played on keyboard on that game, right? You could bring your own shit, but they had shit there. They had the stream going. They had their casters. They were paying out, like, regardless, I think, of everything else that was going on at Final Round. Right, right. yeah. I mean, just, like, the production was there. There was just hands down, like, other than, like, the Victrix set, like, you know, the Victrix guys trying to sell sticks and, like, the, the venues, like, the, 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 the vendors, like, trying to sell their merchandise. Those guys were, like, there on time like wow like this is what i expect to show up and see at a tournament so i i I will commend them on that like that was that was kind of like wow real deal to me like when i had seen that and it's just like you know do you think that's um do you think they kind of get underpraised because of smash oh oh yeah oh yeah is that kind of what that is uh because obviously it's there obviously the production obviously the payouts obviously everything is there but it's just like Again, it's like the little brother of Smash. I guess I, I, I that game feels like. That's well, the funny thing, the funny thing is, is like you see them, they're out. Okay, I'll put it like this: when they look at the numbers, go look at the numbers. Go go look at what their numbers are. Um, they're at fifty million concurrent players. There's more players than all of the fight games put together in that. Well, yeah, it's a free game, of course, but. The turnout is crazy. They do a fantastic job. They always, always pay out. They hook you up. You can talk to the devs every Tuesday. They're there. They're, they they want to hear what you have to say. You know, yeah. that's that's insane. That's the way it should be. We if we support stuff like that, all the other games follow suit, and that's something that people aren't aren't paying attention to. You know, yeah. Pay attention to, you know, look. They're they're doing it. They're they're doing exactly what you need, and you, no one pays attention to it. Why? It's just, oh, I don't like the game. Oh, I don't like. The, it's not Smash. It's not. Man, don't worry about Smash. It'll it'll be around forever. Nintendo, <laughs> you know, it's gonna yeah. be there. But you know, Brawlhalla has been constant. Hasn't changed the game in years. You know, the game hasn't like oh, it's it just adds more characters and it changes dynamics by a little bit. You know, Tekken. Yeah. Tekken 8, you know? What if Tekken 1 was the only Tekken, you know? And they just oh, change the characters out. And they just make sure that that's what it was like. That's what Brawlhalla is like. It doesn't only changes out the characters. And you're not spending, they're not nickel and diming you for all your stuff. You know, they're not $80 for this and that. Brawlhalla, does, 20 bucks to get all the characters and forever. Like, yeah, forever. 
I got that. I got that joint. I played a little bit of Brahma. I have yeah, I know. Like I know. I played. I played a little enough. bit. Yeah. So it's okay. just like, now that's my that's for instance that's my favorite game. So yes, I can go on forever with that one. I know everyone likes. Tekken. You know, man, like, 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 talking about Smash, I'm like, man, let me kind of cut it a little bit. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. okay. like I don't know. Like I love uh, hey, look at the people at first. I was a little fray with Smash because they were kind of they were doing the same thing that the FGC was doing, not talking can, to the guy in the corner. Yeah. I, not I, doing I, the same I, thing. But you know what? After the first run with people here, like Red Cannon and uh, or Cannon Red, um, he he opened it up like they're fun. They're goofy. They're good people, you know. And it goes for both sides, you know. We have fun, good people on both sides. Yeah. So Bra Hollow, man. Give it a try. I have tournaments. I'll I'll put a hundred, two hundred bucks on them. You know, I don't I don't mess around with Brawlhalla. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Free to play too. By the way, that's free to play for sure. All right, man. Well, yeah, man. I think like I've I've asked you definitely a lot of questions in terms of just like you know kind of a backdrop. We talked about like you, um, your introduction. You know what motivates you, important lessons, so on and so forth. So I kind of want to break it down and like this is like kind of like the fun um session of like the podcast right like this is like the stuff you don't really have to like dig deep in man you know just kind of like some fun questions i like to just kind of ask everybody just to kind of have your flavor and everything like that and then like you guys in the chat you guys can participate in this as well if you would like to uh you can just drop what you think in the comments uh or, or whatever you would like or you know your choices so on and so forth so uh we'll just kind of label this like you know like the uh this is like the frame check right here, you know, like button check, you know, like shout out to my man Ernesto. I'm not trying to, you know, trademark that. <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, just this is that. All right. So, uh, first question I got for you, man. Who is your favorite fighting game character of all time? Oh my god. That's tough, man. That's tough. I'm I'm giving you heat right there. That is, but well, I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna be uh I'm gonna be a memer here, but uh and, and everyone who knows who comes here. Jackie Chan <laughs> is my <Jackie> favorite. Chan. <laughs> have you ever played Jackie Chan? <laughs> I've never played that game. No, I've never oh, played it. You come here, play it. My boys, everybody plays it, and they love the crap out of it. It's. It, I didn't even know it existed. It just popped so, up on so, one so, of the so, wait, wait, wait. so is that like the game, or is that like Jackie Chan is a character in the game? He's like, the character. That... He's like the. He's like the only character in the game. Like he has okay. like five of them. <laughs> it is, but I have to say that was my favorite. Uh, I did I, at first. I I was always like Blanca, you know, that was my favorite. But after playing, watching these guys play for hours and hours and hours, I love I love watching it. It's so funny. It's so much fun to watch. Okay. It's great stuff. So Jackie Chan, we got Jackie Chan. Okay. Yep. Okay, man. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. All right. I'll stream it one day. You guys can watch. You yeah. Let me, you know what I'm saying? Just throw me, some, throw, throw me some links on that. Let me check yeah, that out. Man. Let me definitely check that out. It's hilarious. Right. Okay. Next question I got for you, man. Right? You ready for this one? Oh, it's just, this is tough. I'm giving you some. I mean, it's. I said <laughs> they were going to be easy, but they're kind of tough, man. And some of these, I'd be like, damn, I just don't know. Yo, if you were on an island, right? And you can only bring three OSTs from a fighting game, right? Three original soundtracks, three tracks you had to listen to on this island. What would you bring? Mm. Dang it. Three? Can you just leave me down to one? Dang three, it. Yeah, three. Oh, okay. I, mean, I could have just said one, but I just like was like, man, that's too tough because there's just a lot of bangers out um, there. So uh, I guess the uh, Mario theme. And you know we won't even I, okay i'll switch it up for you we won't even we don't even have to keep it fighting game we'll just say osts of all time right yeah like, well OSTs, uh, yeah because like, there's, there's an impossible because I, I i just like a lot of stuff i listen to is like fighting game right like street, a lot fighter, of street like. fighter would be i mean the street Fighter. oh alpha the, the like the beginning okay the alpha, like, was, alpha the alpha theme like just yeah like, the alpha so theme cool. it's uh, yeah that's all is oh every time it turns on in the in the room i'm like different okay. age <laughs> different <laughs> age um definitely mario you know the, the the start of that and oh my gosh um that's, that's super hard what would be that's my tough, last man. One? that's tough last one make it count. probably the 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 beginning of guilty gear now that i've been listening to it for a the minute new guilty gear? yeah the new guilty gear okay i constantly okay. hear it all the time so it's just it's just starting to to get 
It's that just was better at this point. Yeah. Yeah, basically it is. Oh, next to Smash that is constantly on <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All day long. <laughs> it's just right here and just stays on. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. All right, next question, man. You know, we're we're going we're kind of going into the esports realm of this one, right, man? Who is your favorite esports player and why? Hmm. Player? I mean, we got so many of them, man. I mean, like, I mean, player, just nope. one player. Nate Any shot. Game. Nate shot. Nate shot. Yeah, okay. he's probably why, my why favorite why favorite Nate player. Shot? But you know what? It's not. It's not because of Nate shot. It's because of Hex. I don't. To be honest, the players I really didn't give a crap about. It was always the people around the players. You know. Hex was always like that guy, you know, and Nate Shot just happened to be there, you know. Uh, don't get me wrong, hey, uh, Nate Shot's doing his thing now, but that was definitely my favorite uh, uh, player at the time because he was doing everything. He started, he started pioneering a lot of the stuff, you know, Red Bull and all that, and just kind of pushing forward. And even though he was a goofy kid, it just he just kept going, you know. Okay. And that, that's my that would be my favorite player. Okay. All right, next question, man. Okay, okay. Well, that, was a, that was a pretty good answer. I'll, I'll give you that one, man. I'll give you that one. All right, man. So check this out, man. I got I to give you this one, right? Nintendo, PS5, Xbox Series S, or PC, man? Which one you taking? And uh, it's the only thing I could take? Only thing you can take, man. You, know, you can only pick one. One? Definitely, definitely not PS5. <laughs> oh, damn. Not, not the not PS5. Even not the not, PS5. Not. So, okay, why not the PS5? Why is it? Is it just because? It's, <laughs> I mean, it's a new console, right? So, like, is it because it's too? Is it too big? Is you just not feeling it? Not, you don't like the look not, of it? Like, what is it? Stinky. It feels. It doesn't feel right. Like they changed it so much that it's like some of the button setups and layouts are like uh, when you used to go up, you have to go down now. I mean, it's just people. I, I watch a, a person grab a hold of the controller. And you, on the PlayStation 4, they were easily able to move. But on the PlayStation 5, they grab the controller, they're like, what? Uh, they're lost. And that's yeah, a problem. Yeah. You can't have be, can't people lost on their own devices, you know? They have to learn it, you know? And, and maybe it's just because PS4 has been wrong. So PC, because it runs everything. It runs Hey, man, master race, baby. I ain't mad at you, baby. Come to the master race side, all right? <laughs> I ain't mad at you. you know, like, I try to tell people all the time. I just think, look. I'm not gonna get all into the the craziness of it, but just let's just think about this, right? Dreamcast. Oh, you hey, hey, Dreamcast. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go over those like at the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but look, uh, PC, you're not paying any subscriptions for your games, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, you're getting you're getting those frames. Okay, you can always upgrade parts. You know, I, I granted we have a shortage right now. Okay, you can argue that, like, oh, you can't even find the graphics card. You can argue that. Okay, I'll give you that. But there are pre builts. You can go get a pre built and it gets you started. You know, for anybody that's just looking for that entry level, you know, um, man, I just, I just feel like it's just more of a bang for your buck if you're just a gamer. I don't know. And I've, I've had it all. I've had the Xbox, yeah. not the new consoles. I haven't had those, but I've had the PS4s. I've had the Xboxes. I've had the, and just PC has just always done me right. It's just always been good to me, man. It's just, I don't know. I just speak for, and then plus the Steam sales, man. Like, come on, man. Who is beating the Steam summer sale? Who, who, who? I'll no. wait. Definitely that's not so Nintendo. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. You're buying like Witcher, like brand new on Mario. Game. Mario, the you know, first fifty nine ninety nine. Come on, yeah, to that. You know, like, still, yeah, yeah, it's it's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, I just you know, I, I definitely could, I could definitely could make a case there. You know, if I had to be like an attorney and represent PC, I, I would have a strong case for the PC man. But uh, no, man, that was it. That was just the end of that section, you know, in, in terms of that. Uh, I see we have some people in the chat here. Uh, I want to give some big shout outs to my man, Evo Aku. Appreciate you coming by. My man, Taylor Sage, as always. I love you, man. Thank you, bro. Uh, Mayoki Oni, you know what I'm saying? She came through. I don't know if I even, if I, if I butchered that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. Okay. But um, my boy, OG Bad Karma, he came through. Uh, Edson, uh, Edson Boy, he came through. You know, appreciate all you guys. Uh, my my boy says he'll try Brawlhalla, uh, Brawlhalla Mobile Goat. Jackie Chan is the goat. Uh, 
who said he's never played. Uh, bias when it came to the FGC question, uh, or the bet, the bet, the favorite esports question, excuse me, uh, Joey Fury or Anakin for him. Uh, Taylor said, Give me the PS2 or the Dreamcast. You can't have both, man. You got to pick one. Yeah, but those yeah. are but both strong picks. I definitely agree. Those are like, like the Dreamcast and PS2. At man, least the PS2 tough. could be a PC. That's, that's the thing. tough, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's tough. That's definitely tough. Um, there's a lot of great games that came from those consoles. But um, yeah, that go ahead and wrap that wraps it up for us, man. I don't, I don't want to keep you too long, man. I just wanted to talk to you here for a little bit. You know, just kind of pick your brain, see where you're coming from, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate you, bro. I hope you stay healthy out here. I hope you stay safe. You know, keep these players safe if you're going to throw events. You know, that's just my only thing to you and your organization. I'd like to see you guys just keep moving forward, man. You know, you're you're definitely a big uh, a big impact out here, you know. And if you're and again, if you're going to just throw these events, man, just again, like just just try to be as responsible as you can, man. And I know you're trying your best out there uh, to deal with these crazy waters that we're in right now. So I, I definitely my hats off to you. I commend you. You know, people are making choices, whether they're good or bad. I'm not here to say. But, you know, at the very least, you're just trying to keep people safe for the most part. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a tough job, man. You know, you, yeah. the, the criticism, I can imagine everything that you face in terms of that. But um, I just kind of want to leave the floor a little bit for, you know, the chat here uh, while I ask you, you know, like uh, anything, if you have any last words and where people can find you on your social media and anybody in the chat, if you have any questions for Taylor Sage, you can go ahead and drop them now and I'll go ahead and ask them as we wrap this up here. Right. But uh, yeah, let, let them know where you are, where they can find you at, man. So uh, you can find me everywhere on War Guts. Everything is War Guts. You can go YouTube, Facebook, everything is War Guts. And a lot of our videos, so we, we stream multiple platforms. So you can find us anywhere. I like YouTube a bit personally. Twitch gets janky on us from time to time, <laughs> but I like I do like I do like YouTube as a as our uh, main base. Um, but other than that, man, that's it. We, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. by the way, safety. Yes, we're super. I mean, we closed down for two weeks. You know. Um, so we are part of that that safety. We we're never gonna hide anything. We're gonna put it out there if it's something. And uh, a lot some of these places hide stuff, you know. And I I don't believe it, that that's a good community push, you know. And sometimes some, somebody said that you get in trouble for that, but I think it's good to be truthful and show everything your whole hand. Um, so we we want everyone to know that we're pushing that safety super hard and we always make everyone wear a mask we have masks at the door we have hand sanitizer at the door we do checks at the door temperature checks at the door even on a monday on a tuesday on a wednesday it don't matter so that's our deal <laughs> okay and uh and if people that don't know you know what i'm saying and they just want to come by and check you out like what are your hours in terms of like your your establishment like you guys have any hours or like you know monday through friday like this time through this time or saturday you know like any events coming up or so monday monday and wednesday we go from one o'clock to seven o'clock uh thursday is one to nine because we do a little teaching with the kids that come by um friday it's one to twelve so we're here to I'm here from one <laughs> in the afternoon till day twelve. Day day. You know, just yeah. all day, pretty much. Like, yeah, all day, and then Saturday and Sunday is five five o'clock to twelve o'clock. Um, and then if there's tournaments, we reschedule at a about one o'clock to five o'clock for the schedule, middle of the day. So you're not spending, you're not staying here till you know twelve o'clock at night trying to get the last bracket in. Um, we're trying to make it, you know, in the middle of the day as much as possible. We've noticed that that was something that was a problem before. You know, all of a sudden people coming in from Oklahoma City are like, dang, is this going to end when we hit till like two in the morning? You know, that's a long drive home. So we want to make sure that everybody has the chance to, you know, get back home safely and do everything, you know, don't have to worry about too much, you know, uh, getting back home. Um, so a lot of our tournaments will be at one, one to five. Um, and tournaments cost, it always will. Um, but it's free to play here. You can come play and practice free to practice, get it in, you know, whatever it is. If there's nobody here, I'll, I'll play with you. You know, I'll wind up getting good and <laughs> you, you won't like me after a bit, but you know, it's, it's just, 
just come in, you know, and it, it's there. If you come in the one person here, Oh, there's only one person here. Then somebody else will show up and then someone else will show up and then someone else will show up. And then you wind up with a crowd of people you were not expecting, you know? So, okay. Okay, okay, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. I appreciate you hanging out with your boy. Cooper Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. You know, I got you. That's all love, baby. You know, I had to, I had to bring you on, man. And and uh, I'm, I'm definitely trying to line up some more episodes for you guys, like trying to get some players involved, try to just get, a, you know, a little bit of everything, man. So I appreciate everybody that hung out, you know, for the whole stream um, with your boy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So this is episode two. Uh, be looking out for episode three. I'm going to try to start like doing these like every Tuesday, Tuesday, like 630, 7 o'clock maybe. Um, so this is episode two, my man, War Guts. Uh, we were here, got you guys some good, uh, good conversation. I appreciate the love. And until the next one, man, we'll catch you guys. All right. Peace. Later.